Hey, what is going on everyone? I'm Wicked and today I will introduce you to the block architecture. So remember a couple of tutorials back when I was talking about blocks and qubits. I mentioned that we'll come back later into checking out what's up with this data layer we took out the equation back then. Well, buckle up because the time has come. Here is the content view for what we'll try to learn today and their specific timestamps. So yeah, first of all, what is an architecture? What is it all about? Why do we need an architecture in the first place? Can't we just skip it? Well, no, we can't skip it at all. Because as simple and as natural as it may be, if you think a little bit in depth, we, as human species, can't live without a predefined and stable architecture, which is mainly our skeleton. Imagine having all kinds of different classes, methods, functions, variables all over the place. This is definitely going to result in a total failure. Now assimilate this to us humans. How would our life be if we only had our organs? Everyone had to choose where to place their heart, their lungs, their kidneys, as probably none of these people would have survived in this situation without an organized structure and stable skeleton, neither would have any of the apps built without a proper architecture. It's as simple as that. So think of the architecture as being the skeleton, the blueprint, the structure which keeps all your code organized, stable and easy to test and maintain. Now block architecture is simply an architecture which has block as its center of gravity. So not only is block a design pattern and a state management library, but it is also an architectural pattern. Let's come back to a familiar image you saw a couple of tutorials back. What we know for now is that for every interaction an user makes with the app through its UI, there should be an event dispatched to the specialized block or qubit, which will process it and will eventually emit a state that is going to rebuild the UI in a way so that the user gets a feedback of what's going on with the app. The big unknown variable in all this equation is how block processes the event and perhaps retrieves the necessary data to show to the user. Let me put it this way for you. Almost every app nowadays retrieves its data from the internet. So in order to link our block-based Flutter app with the outer data layer, we need to add the data layer into our equation. So that, for example, whenever the block receives a fetching event from the UI, it will request some data from the internet, retrieve it as a response, parse it, and then return the data with a new state to the user. We can split this into three separate main layers, which non surprisingly will depend one on another. So the UI is mostly seen as a presentation layer, the block slash qubit as the business logic layer, and the last but not the least, the app's data as simply the data layer. We're going to start with the data layer, which is farthest from the user interface and work our way up to the presentation layer. Okay, so as we discussed previously, the data layer has the responsibility of retrieving and also manipulating data from one or more sources, whether we're talking about network requests, databases or other asynchronous sources. To do this, the data layer has been split up inside three important sublayers, models, data providers and repositories. I have set them up into this specific order because you will see that they will also be dependent on one another. Ok, so you finish some Flutter tutorials and you feel confident of what you have accomplished. You want to build your own first app now. You think of an idea but then you realize that you don't know where to actually start programming the app. What is actually the first thing you should code? From my experience, I believe that the best way to start your application, of course, after you visually and technically designed it, is by coding your models. But what exactly is a model? A model is, as its name is implying, a blueprint to the data your application will work with. Let's pretend your application is a brand new weather app. So the data it will be fetching from the internet is going to be mainly weather data, right? Well, this data needs to be stored somehow inside your application. How can you do that inside Flutter? Simply by creating a class for the specific data. So, in this case, we'll have a weather class, right? In this class, we'll need to set up specific attributes like temperature, forecast, weather icons, wind speed, city name and so on and so forth. But how do you know which attributes your class should have? Well, you need to be sure that these attributes will be a little bit linked and not completely pay attention. A little bit linked 
to the data that will be received from the data source. So if the data source for our app will be a weather API like AQ Weather, for example, chances are that the weather data response from them will be a JSON string. Telling you what a JSON is is not a part of this tutorial, nor is the definition of an API. But in short, a JSON is a collection of paired data like this one here, and an API stands for Application Programming Interface. The API lets your product or app communicate with other products and apps without having to know how they were implemented in the first place. So for example, with a subscription, we can access the AccuWeather API weather data without having to dive in into their code implementation. We can just take the data we're interested in and that's all. Therefore, a model is nothing more than a class which contains the data the application itself will be dependent on. Note that it is highly recommended that your app models should be pretty independent of the source. As I said, they should not be completely linked. What do I mean by this? The models from inside the app must be kind of generic and universal to multiple data sources. So why shouldn't they be identical to the data provided by the weather API? Well, Think of what is going to happen if you have two different weather APIs in your app as a source to your weather data. Their APIs will set completely different JSONs to your app. Perhaps one of them has the temperature inside a temp name field and the other one in a temperature name field. Then you will need to parse them separately to your universal models. Remember that inside many apps there might be multiple data sources, but it's recommended to have only one specific data model model in which they will be parsed. This means that your models should be independent enough to get weather data from many different weather APIs. So now, after you hopefully understood what a model is, it is time to move over to the next sublayer, the data provider. The data provider's responsibility is to provide raw data to its successor, the repository sublayer. But let's concentrate on the data provider for a moment. A data provider is actually an API for your own application. This means that it is going to be a class which will contain different methods, and these methods will serve as a direct communication way with the data sources. This is where all the magic happens. This is where Flutter asks for the required data straight from the internet. All your network requests like http.get, http.post, put, delete will go inside. Take in mind that the return type of these functions won't be of the type of model you created earlier, but rather of the type of raw data you received from the data source, which for example, maybe a type of JSON string. The component in which we'll have our model classes instantiated as objects is the repository. The repository is mainly a wrapper around one or more data providers. It is safe to say that it's the part of the data layer block communicates with. Similar to the other data layer subparts, repositories are also classes, classes which contain dependencies of their respective data providers. So, for example, the weather repository will have a dependency on the weather provider, with the help of which we'll call the getRawWeather method and retrieve the weather raw data. The repository is where the modal object will be instantiated with the raw data from the data provider, or raw data which will be parsed to modal data with from JSON methods. The repository is also a perfect place for fine-tuning the data before giving it as a response to the block. Here you can filter it, sort it and do all kinds of last moment changes before it will be sent to the business logic layer. The business logic layer is where most of the blocks and qubits will be created inside your Flutter app. Its main responsibility is to respond to the user input from the presentation layer with new emitted states. This layer is meant to be the mediator between the beautiful, bright and colorful side of the UI and the dark, dangerous and unstable side of the data layer. Why is one of them beautiful and shiny and the other one dark and unstable you might ask? Well, you are supposedly designing and programming your app to the best standards so that the UI and the backend looks and most importantly works flawlessly. This is the bright side. But what about the internet? What about the APIs you're getting data from? Do you have any guarantee that they will be as amazing and well programmed as your app is? Well, if the APIs are not designed and programmed by yourself, definitely no. 
errors may arise, bugs, crashes, server issues and so on and so forth. Being the mediator between the bright and the dark side, the business logic layer is the last layer that can intercept and catch any errors from within the data layer and protect the application from crashing in the last moment. Now, since this layer is closely related to the data layer, especially the repository sublayer, it can depend on one or more repositories to retrieve the data needed to build up the application state. Now see how every part of the puzzle starts to get into the right place now? Truly amazing. Another important fact you need to know and understand is that blocks can communicate one with each other. Qubits can do this too. This is really important. So let's say we have our previous weather block and we also have an internet block which emits states based on whether there is a stable internet connection or not. Supposedly your internet connection dies when you want to know the weather from your location. Inside the weather block you can depend on the internet block and subscribe to its stream of emitted states, then react on every internet state emitted by the internet block. So in this case the internet block would have emitted a no internet state down the stream. The weather block will listen to the stream and will eventually receive the no internet state. The weather block can also emit a state in response to this internet state, letting the user know that there is no internet connection. Don't forget that the subscription to the block needs to be closed manually by overriding the close method. We don't want any stream leaks inside our app. We have arrived at our final layer of the block architecture, the presentation layer. This layer sums up everything related to the user interface, the widgets, the user inputs, the lifecycle events, animations, and so on and so forth. And also, its responsibility in our case is to figure out how to render itself based on one or more block states. Most application flows will start with, perhaps, an app start event, which triggers the application to fetch some data from the data layer. For example, when the first screen of the app will be created, inside this constructor there will be a weather block which adds the app started event so that some location based weather will be displayed on the screen right away. Here's a quick tip on how you can structure a project and folders in order to obey this architecture. So the rule is that for every layer and even sub layer I introduced today, you need to have a separate separate folder inside the lib folder. So in a serious complete application you may have three folders, data, business logic and presentation. Inside the data layer you might have multiple subfolders like models, data, providers and repositories. Inside of the business logic folder you might have blocks and qubits of folders. And finally inside the presentation layer you might have multiple subfolders like widgets, pages, animations and so on and so forth. You can name these folders whatever you want, as long as you stick to the architecture. Ok, let's proceed to the entire block architecture workflow for a basic weather application. We currently have only one screen and a single text input inside. Let's say for example that the user wants to know the current weather for Chicago. He types in Chicago and then hits the get weather button. Currently everything is happening inside the presentation layer. Now, when the user pressed the get weather button, a get weather event was dispatched to the weather block. Weather block knows that first of all, it should emit a loading state to the user to let him know that it is working on his request by displaying a loading animation on the screen. Then inside the weather block there is a dependency on the weather provider which can be accessed and with the help of which the get weather for a location will be called asynchronously. We call it asynchronously because we don't know when the data is going to come back so we'll have to wait for it. Now inside the weather repository there is a dependency for the weather API data provider with the help of which we'll call the get raw weather for location of Chicago. Here is where the connection with the outer dark parts of the internet occurs. Inside of this get raw weather for location function, there will be an http.get request towards another API like aqweather, which will receive the request and then send back a JSON string full of requested data back to our weather API inside the data provider layer. If everything is okay, 
the raw weather data, which is actually a JSON string, will be sent back to the weather repository, where it will be parsed into a weather model. Then finally, the weather model will get passed back into the block. The block is really happy that everything went smooth and emits a new state called weather loaded, in which it will send the weather model object as an attribute towards the presentation layer. The presentation layer with the help of block builder will exit the loading state since a new state has been received and rebuild the UI with the new weather data, marking the end of this entire workflow. I hope you understood at least the idea of this tutorial. Later on, when we're going to build real apps inside Flutter with Block, we'll use this as our architecture and you'll understand even more how everything works inside of it. In the next tutorial, we'll dive into the block testing. Until then though, if you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because more awesome videos like this are about to come and I guess you don't want to miss any of them. Take care, stay safe, Wicked is out, bye bye.